This is the Specialized Turbo Taro X 6.0. There is a 4.0, a 5.0, and a 6.0. So this is top of the line. It's got the highest torque motor, 90 Newton meters versus 70 or 50. It's got the highest capacity battery, 710 watt hours versus 710 and 530. It's got an excellent drivetrain. This is 12 speed SRAM Eagle, 500% gear ratio, 10 to 50. We've got an awesome RockShox Lyric up front, 130 millimeters of travel. So I was looking at this and reading some of the literature. They tried to make this a little bit more upright. You can see the, the fenders here. We've got the excellent 65 millimeter wide uh, aluminum alloy fenders with the flex tender, that extra low in the front, the rear fender that interfaces with this proprietary rack. And you look at it and you're like, okay, this is kind of an SUV, like a sport utility vehicle. You get around town, you got the lights and everything. At the same time, again, up here, 130 millimeters of travel, 120 in the rear. So I was looking at this like, maybe it's kind of a cross country, almost trail when you get into that 130 millimeter travel and some of the components on this boost hub spacing, 110 millimeters up front with a 15 millimeter through axle, 148 millimeters in the rear with the 12 millimeter through axle. So this is a, this is heavy duty, this is sturdy stuff. And, and this is a class three speed pedelec. Okay, so back to the different, you know, models here, the Taro X, the 4.0, it's class one but the 5.0 and the 6.0, it's class three. So you could use this thing to maybe commute to work and keep up with traffic, just get there a little bit faster, have some fun. But it, obviously it's very trail capable. I'm riding it around here, just having a blast. And it's very comfortable. Both suspension elements are air, so you can sag them down to your body weight. 35 millimeter uh, stanchions up here, by the way, love the black anodized look. And then they also have, in this case, a clicker for compression. So a lot of adjustability there. Down here we have have rebound adjust and it's kind of the same back here except it's really just like a lockout so right now we're in unlocked now it's locked it's gonna be a little bit more efficient you're not gonna get that bobbing feel and if you're riding fast on the road you want to be efficient you just raise the tire pressure lock that out and you're good and it also has rebound adjust this thing comes in four frame sizes we're on the size medium and interestingly it's also a mullet setup so we have 29 er up front and then 27.5 both of these 2.35 inches wide with ground control these are specialized tires the tire pressure spread here is 25 to 30 psi 1.5 to 3.5 bar for both so the tires do match it's just again 29 or up front 27.5 in the rear and that mullet setup what it's going to do is lower your attack angle up front and let you overcome these different obstacles more smoothly but then in the back you're going to be a little bit more nimble maybe a little bit lighter weight and it's just going to follow you more quickly specialized is one of my favorite companies i mean they have some really nice touch points and sort of the body geometry saddle I was a little surprised we've got these almost like hybrid pedals or something you can see I've, I've had a rock strike already they're just kind of nylon plastic with this grip tape almost like a skateboard we got the reflectors and stuff so this comes back to the SUV um, the brakes on this hydraulic and another really top end part here these are SRAM code, and you can see we've got throw and reach adjust, tool free, so you can bring these in and out, and then sort of how it catches with the throw. There's a dial right here, 200 millimeter rotor in the front, quad piston calipers, and then in the rear, it's a 180 quad piston calipers. So excellent braking all across the frame here. This is a 58 pound bike, as, as seen here with all the you know, fenders and rack and everything. And that's, it's a little bit heavy, but interestingly, it's just 1.3 pounds heavier than the Taro 4.0 EQ that I covered last year. That was a hardtail version of this bike. For me personally, I would be happy to spend the extra money to get that comfort, the full suspension setup that we see here. And the price points for the 4.0, it's 4,500 bucks. 5,500 bucks for the 5.0 and 6,500 bucks for the 6.0 here. So I think that 5.0 is a nice sweet spot. You still get the class three performance, but you're saving a thousand bucks. The components are still gonna be really nice. I wanna point out some of the other things I noticed when I was studying this bike. Two bottle cage mounts, and I think a cage would actually fit better here. This might be for like a folding lock or something. 38 tooth, like e-bike specific steel, they say on that chain ring and it's narrow wide so it's going to grab the chain so between the little plastic retainer and the narrow wide teeth really good setup this is actually a sram eagle chain i haven't seen that before kind of neat 
And then we have the X01 derailleur with that cassette we were talking about before, 500% SRAM Eagle, just really nice. These are single click shifters. So, you know, just kind of like that, use your thumb for both of them. Uh, a lot of times on Shimano parts, you can you can dump a lot of gears like this when you're shifting down. I, you know, when you're looking at a 90 Newton meter motor, I guess that could, you know, you're potentially putting those teeth and the chain under a lot of pressure. So I, I kind of get it. I've, I've noticed a lot of the e-bikes are going in that direction. I'm loving these Ergon locking grips and just the kind of comfort touch points. I mentioned the saddle earlier, and then we have a dropper post that is size specific depending on the frame that you get. And this is like infinite adjust. So it doesn't have these like set points. You can really dial this in. 34.9 millimeter seat post diameter. So it's a little bit wider than the hardtail version of the Taro. I love that they've got this extra long rubber slap guard. The hardtail version had a slap guard below as well, and it even had like a little chain cover, but this being more of an off-road oriented product, they, they got rid of that, which kind of makes sense. We still have a lot of stickers around here, whether it's the crank arms or just the side of the, the frame where they're trying to keep things from getting scuffed up. You can see the kickstand down here. This is something I complain about sometimes. It's so pointy at the end. If you're on soft, loamy terrain, that can kind of sink in. And again, 58 pound bike. As much as I love the fenders, it is worth noting that if you're on a trail with lots of obstacles like this, you can, you know, kind of get snagged on like a log or a rock or something. And this is, is called the flex tender, so it's very flexible and it's just going to bounce out of the way. But you do notice it more, just like you'll notice the little rocks and things getting caught on the between the knobs and then occasionally, you know, dancing their way through these fenders. Uh, I suppose you could remove them. If you do that, then you're gonna have to probably remove this rear rack as well since they're connected to each other. And as far as the rear rack goes, uh, it's rated for 20 kilograms, roughly 44 pounds. It's really only set up for panniers, but it does have these little slider stoppers. So your panniers aren't gonna be going back and forth. And we do have the bungee loops at the bottom. We don't have a platform on top. So if you wanna do a child seat or a trunk bag, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. And we do have that on the hardtail Taro. So if you're someone who's gonna be hauling more gear and you want the higher weight capacity and more functionality, that's probably the way to go. But they, they do have a front rack that would mount right here where this badge is. You take that off and then you'd have like a 10 kilogram rated rack. And it's set up perfectly where as you steer the bike, the tray and that platform, they're connected to the frame. So they're gonna be sturdy. They're not gonna dump side to side, but they might interfere with this headlight a little bit. And this is an awesome light, I must say. This thing is rated at 600 lumen by default, but there's actually like a bright mode button over here. So it goes up to a thousand. I mean, it's just incredible. It's got a metal housing, it's design. I like it, except I, I do kind of wish it had more of a cutout. There's a little bit of a notch here, but in terms of side visibility, this is an all black bike, unless you get the light gray. So I'm always thinking about reflective tires and accents on the frame and just visibility. Imagine you're going really fast and you're transitioning from a trail or a path and onto the road. It's nice to be seen and, and be safe that way. So the rear light is pretty special too. This is 11 lumens, not super high lumens, but it does have uh, multiple LEDs here. You can see two side by side. And when you stop, I think there's an accelerometer in there. It senses your deceleration and it goes bright. It doubles the brightness. So I think these other two lights turn on and you get 22 lumens. So that's how that works. Another little reflective sticker right there and that extended fender. The Flex Tenders Dry Tech is what they call it. There's actually some routing on these fenders that brings the water out and to the sides instead of up into your face. Just some of the coolest fenders I've ever seen in the industry. They, they work really well and they seem really durable. So up front we can see the seat post dropper lever. We got that bright button and a specialized flick bell over here that's got a really pretty chime. So I spun the bike around. This is the specialized 2.2 motor. So you're getting higher torque, you're getting that class three performance. And it's actually made by Brosa. So this is kind of a collaboration. You don't see any Brosa labeling. It's because it's like custom tuned and, and it's I think it's a real partnership between the two companies, but that's technically 
the manufacturer. Like most mid drives that are a little bit fancier, this thing is measuring your rear wheel speed. You can see a little magnet right there, so they're doing a great job. You don't have a spoke magnet that can get bumped out of position. Uh, it's measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque, so it's really smooth, it's very natural. It does not have shift detection, as with most mid drive e bikes. It's best to ease off a little bit as you're shifting gears, just so you're not putting that undue pressure and strain on the chain, the cassette, everything. I love that this motor can support over 120 RPM. So as you downshift and you start to spin really quickly, which for me, it happens a lot as I'm approaching a steep climb, I'm downshifting, but I wanna maintain my speed. Having a motor that can keep up and still expend power and support me is important. So I wanna show you the charger, kind of the welcome kit that Specialized gives you. It's really excellent. It's got this high quality neoprene case, zippered, got all of the manuals and everything here for all the different components and the bike a four amp charger, so super fast with a wall side removable plug. So it's fairly compact. You can kind of pack it however you need to. And it weighs about 1.9 pounds. So it's a little bit heavier, but it's solid. There's no fans on it. It's, it's very durable feeling and it has that magnetic interface that we talked about. So let's say someone does trip over the cable. It's not gonna bring the whole bike down. It's just gonna pop right off. You can charge the battery on or off the frame with a high capacity 710 watt hour pack. I think a lot of people would just leave it on the bike, but keep in mind, if you're in a hot desert type of place and you're storing the bike in your garage or something, that could be hard on the cells. You don't want this to get extremely hot. It's not gonna get as many full charge cycles if it's exposed to that heat. On the flip side of that, if, if you're somewhere that's very cold and you're leaving this out in your garage and then you go hop on it in the morning, you might only get half range because those cells are like freezing cold. So it's best to keep this in a cool, dry location and keep it at least, you know, 50% charged if you aren't going out for a ride for several months, just to kind of keep the thing at neutral. I believe that their BMS is designed to, uh, you know, stop this battery from discharging beyond the 4% uh, level and then past 96%. So those two extreme high and low, it's supposed to have some self-protection lithium ion battery in there. So the charge port and the locking cylinder are right here on the left-hand side of the bike. I prefer to have them on the right-hand side, the drivetrain side and up higher, just a little bit easier to reach. You won't hit your head on the handlebar when you stand up. Thankfully, they aren't directly in the path of the pedal, so hopefully you don't snag the, the charging cable. Be careful with this little cover because it's just kind of got a little plastic arm and I've seen this get ripped off before and then I don't know if you try to get an, a replacement or something. So we insert the key, twist a little bit, Okay, and then we use this lever to kind of push down and then the battery comes out just like that. Now this is 8.3 pounds. It's pretty close to that front fender. So I'm always trying to avoid scratching it. Want to avoid dropping this. This thing is 36.9 volts, 19.2 amp hours, 710 watt hour pack. I think they've done a good job and I like how it's rounded. It's not super long like some of the other batteries and that allows them to have a bunch of different frame sizes. Again, small to extra large. And by the way, if you get the small size frame for the Taro X, it's not gonna be a mullet setup. Both wheels are gonna be 27.5. So I, th I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and hang this back up. But before I do, there's a little charge level indicator, a little energy bus interface. It's actually the same one that you reach through the frame to, to get access to when you're charging it and it's on the bike. So sort of hang it here. There's almost like a axle or something going through the frame. And then you can push, which I love. I don't have to like twist the key to get it to clip in. And then you have this little like cinch lever again, pushes it all the way, can pull the keys out. I want to point out that Specialized is not using an extra shield over the battery. It's directly exposed. It's IPX6 rated. All of the electronics are, so they're highly water and dust resistant. But what this means is you don't need an extra metal or plastic shield to go over it. So it's simpler, saves weight, saves time getting the battery on and off. And a lot of times these plastic shields from other companies, they don't actually lock to the frame. So they could be taken and it, it just, it seems like this is simpler and I like it. Okay, so let's boot this thing up. This is the TCD2 Turbo Connect display unit, second generation, kind of rubberized. You can twist it and remove it, but it's wired into the bike. So you can't really actually take it off. I mean, you could hang it somewhere and then use this for your phone because uh, they do have mission control app. It's very cool or Garmin or some other uh, GPS. But yeah, I, I just thought that was interesting. You can see a little th threaded portion where you could 
more securely mount this, like semi-permanently so people can't just twist it like I did. I love that it has a USB 3.0, five volt, one amp output. So maybe you are mounting an additional accessory. You could charge that off of the rechargeable e-bike battery. To power this thing up, just press power button at the bottom for a second, kind of beeps. It's a color display. We started in trail right here and then the lights go on immediately. And you can turn them off, although I'd probably leave them running most of the time, especially in the city and riding at high speed. You can also dim the display and turn off the beep, but you're gonna need the app for that. I kind of wish you could do all of that just from the button pad and the, the default LCD screen we see here. Holding the plus button is gonna give you walk mode, which is handy if you get a flat tire or you're just on terrain that's steep and technical and you wanna walk through it, that's fine. This is the main readout, okay? So you can press this F1 button, it'll cycle through some others, but this is the one I leave it on most of the time. Got like a clock up here, battery percentage with 1% increments, so very precise. Current speed, we're in kilometers per hour right now. And then as we press the plus and minus, we'll go through these different assist levels. We can go all the way down to just off, and then we're a heavy bike with lights and charging capability, but you could still track your rides and do uh, some cool things that way. The first level is eco, up to trail, turbo. I, I should note, there's like this little haptic kind of buzzing going on here, I can feel it, which is nice if it's loud and you can't actually hear the beep while you're riding. Each of these assist levels you can refine by pressing F2, and then you can go 10% increments, so 40%, 30%, 20%. You can adjust it on the fly like that, which is really cool, or you can use the Mission Control app to adjust each one of these assist levels and really fine tune it. I'm gonna show you that in a minute, uh, but first I'll take you through some of the other uh, menus I talked about. So that F1 button, we've got distance and ride time down here now, battery percentage, consumption, estimated range. That one's really cool, so it dynamically adjusts. If altitude, altitude gain, altitude descent, rider power, motor power, power ratio, infinite tune, that's what I was talking about before where I can kinda adjust that by pressing the F2 button. And then we're back home. Now there is wireless compatibility with this, so you could get a heart rate monitor and you can actually do smart control with the app where you tell it, hey, I want to maintain a certain heart rate. Or, hey, I know I want to go, you know, 10 miles and I want to make it there before completely draining my battery. And then it'll automatically adjust assist to make sure you get there. There's some really cool features and the specialized turbo family of bikes, they all use this same mission control app and it can update the firmware and the software on your bike for you without going to the shop. There's just so much you could do with it and it's pretty neat. It's been around for a long time. They're always updating it. Okay, we're all connected to the bike. See the serial number, a picture of it. And there's this new locking feature that will disable all of the electronics. And then there's like a motion sensor on the bike. So it, it will say locked and then it will actually sound an alarm to kind of deter theft, which is pretty cool. We can tune the different levels of assist. So it can go into eco, for example, and change the support, the peak power, the remote vibration, the beeper. I mean, you can, you can do so much with this app and I really appreciate it because sometimes those beeps get a little bit annoying diagnose your bike, service, support. You can see your rides down here and kind of track that over time. This does interface with some of the other uh, accounts like Strava and Komoot if you use those. Looks like you can have the bike automatically start, have the display always stay active instead of maybe falling asleep over time if you're not touching it. We can change the units here. So I'm gonna go to Imperial. Wow, and it updated real time. Gotta love that. And here's that smart control that I was talking about. If I click that and then turn it on, we can say, okay, is it about duration, distance, or heart rate? And you can you can adjust all of the different parameters. Just very cool. Specialized has some great videos on this app, and I've got a full walkthrough back at the Electric Bike Review forums where the screen's a little easier to see. Okay, so I'm gonna do some riding here. Highest level of assist, turbo, it's just set up stock. This way you'll be able to hear the motor and see how quickly it responds. It's very responsive. Just amazing how it can climb, even at low speed, some of this stuff. And that precision is is just crucial when you're you know around cactus and big rocks and sharp stuff. So yeah, I'm a big fan. Oh yeah, I've got pretty good control here, even just with that front brake. 
Okay, you're way up high by the saddle. I just wanted to give you a good view of the drivetrain. I did notice that as I descend, you can hear that kickstand bouncing around as we go over the rocks and stuff. So there's a little bit of noise and you might hear the pebbles going through and the motor. You can see how the rear suspension is single pivot. It's not four bar horse link like a lot of the fancier trail bikes. Uh, this is another one of those areas where maybe it supports the rear rack. And also this is kind of like an SUV setup more than high performance trail. Well guys, it's been a beautiful day. Awesome to get to try this bike out on the trail. This is a free review, just fun to get to see the latest and greatest from Specialized. They sent a demo bike and again, this is the Turbo Taro X full suspension 6.0. For the full written review, check out electricbikereview.com. I hand measured all these specs. I try to go deep and really give you just a, the, the full understanding of, of what I'm seeing on the bike. Leave your comments or questions and I'll try to help you out. Back at the site, I have a comparison tool. So you could look at maybe like a Levo, you know, it's the fully mountain bike. It doesn't have the fenders or racks. You could check out some of their other city bikes, Vado or something, and just see where you fit. Uh, I've got some forums so you could ask around, see what accessories are working well. I love you guys, ride safe. I'll see you on the trail.